OG, we OG, oh no OG. You're not bullish enough, yeah Oh no, you're not bullish enough You ain't got the oh no I get stoned by the bolo Bitcoin set to oh no, yeah Experts on reload, yeah, yeah You're not bullish enough, yeah Oh no, you not bullish enough You ain't got the oh no I get stoned by the bolo Bitcoin set to oh no Experts hot on reload, reload Man pool getting hot Everybody wanna rock, ayy Runes is coming, everybody on the night, ayy It's a nuisance, order no revolution Ayy, uh, order no revolution Yo, is my guy for real, bro? Runes though Y'all French right now? Yo, BRC420, bro. Yeah, bro. Yo, that shit found fire, bro. Imagine if he in here. Ah. Yeah, lock it in the seal. Murder. I got balls of steel. Uh, Nuki's on the field. Yeah, yeah this shit for real. Mm -hmm. With no calls, I get so far. Got a hundred phone calls that I go hard. Then they gon' love me. Smoke weed, huddle back. Uh, I get shy, Steve. Where my. Bitcoin looking lovely All this Satoshi's nothing above me Bitcoin's alive, what you gon' do? Man, pool fees are high, high Order no, order no, order no Where does it start? Nobody knows It's a uh, revolution, ayy Bitcoin is the one, no substitution, ayy We should see in your glow, be it's order no revolution Welcome back to Order Revolution. My name is Shizzy on this channel. We cover the entire Bitcoin ordinal ecosystem. What is up, guys? We have an amazing show for you guys today. We are live for another ordinal hour. It's going to be a little different today. Not the same. It's going to be actually even better because we got two of the, the our, my good friends. I was hanging out with them guys in New York. We went to uh, Little China and and what is it? <laughs> Little China and, and Italy. What is it? What is it called? Italy? Little it, no, it was, uh a uh, little italy or some crap but yeah it was fun uh first time in new york these guys were walking me through it it was uh it was a good time and uh, i'm glad to have these guys on the show we got kramer and we have j25 from the ordinal support desk and most importantly it's the orange cubicle if you guys are not following the orange cubicle on youtube you guys need to be over there those guys are just like us man they're 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 alpha you know they have all the alpha but uh but without further ado let me let's get the show started but before we do, I have a quick uh, word from uh, our sponsor here. Uh, as the launch of Runes gets closer, make sure you etch all your Runes at Sat Hunter for great rates. Plus, SatHunter.com has the top paying referral program in the industry. When you refer a friend, you earn 50% of the service fee paid in Bitcoin. You can track everything on your dashboard. Etch Runes with SatHunter.com. That's S A T H U N T E R.com. Referral link in show notes. Please use our link, it supports the show. And uh, without further ado, let's get this thing started. Let me bring in my co-host for this show. We got Kramer. We got J25. Welcome to Ordinal hey. Revolution, my friends. What's up? What's up, Thanks. man? So uh, you guys were, uh, we were walking. What, what was I calling it? It was Little Italy and... and, and uh, Little Italy and Chinatown. Chinatown. Or Italy Town and, uh, yeah, and, little, and, little, and, and little China. <laughs> yeah. Big trouble, Little China. Yeah. <laughs> Good times, good times. That was actually fun. We're walking for an hour. I thought we were walking back to the car, but we, we were never really walking back to the car. <laughs> no, it was that hotel we stopped in. That place was beautiful, though. That was a good, good place your buddy liked. Oh, Foxy, right? Or something. Yeah, the, Roxy? the Roxy? The Roxy or something? Yeah, that was, oh, yeah, that the was, Roxy Hotel. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was wild. It had yeah. that like uh, John Wick Hotel vibes, you know? Yeah. I, dude, how'd you guys like uh, Cafe Roma? That, that, that was great. Cool. That was awesome. Yeah. That that was the uh with the the little things, right? The cannolis, cannoli, the chocolate espresso. cannolis. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was good. Brian me was good. like Italian style for sure. Good times, good times. All right, so I had J twenty five on the show many times, but Kramer, this is your first time here, buddy. Could you give us a little background on yourself, bud? Yeah, man. Uh, thanks for having me, uh, dude. I've been in crypto pretty much since it started. 
uh, pretty much faded social media for a very long time, but I work in media and uh, helped out everyone else's social media. But, um, you know, the last year or so I started getting in spaces and um, just getting in the mix of everything and then trying to take everything I, I know from working in production and documentaries and music videos and uh, trying to apply it to uh, ordinals and crypto. I think there's a huge demand for media content for that kind of stuff and see what happens. Hey, man, you're OG OG, bro. You're OG. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh yeah man I'm learning, man I've, I've fumbled many bags so what was your biggest fumble you don't mind me asking Dude, my one thing fumble, you can take back if you can uh, take back uh, take back. my biggest fumble was uh cripsy exchange that was probably like in 2015 2014 i had so much stuff in that man like and i got do they big Vern. If you're out there, buddy. I'm still looking for you. Still, <laughs> every event, I'm always looking for you, dude. I know what you look like. But, um, <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, I, dude, I had like 200 million Doge in that thing. Um, like, at least 30 Bitcoin and a bunch of stuff in that. I got wrecked pretty hard. Not, yeah. not a whole bag, but it was a good chunk, dude. Yeah, man. But you got you got to think of that as your tuition, right? Some people pay millions of dollars for college tuitions, and that was sadly that was your tuition. I'm sorry to hear that, but you know, the longer you're in the space, the the, the bigger it hurts, right? So now ten years kind of like, damn, that point one I lost way back when it sucks right now. So. Yeah, it, it wasn't that bad at the time, but you, you know, after every cycle, man, yeah, it's it hurts. <laughs> oh man. And Jay, anything new with you, man? I just really enjoyed meeting you in person, man. Had a blast. Thanks for Kramer to taking us out to the old uh, Taco Bell Cantina. I think we might be hearing a story <laughs> about that soon. But, uh, that's for another day. But yeah, dude, it was just a, a blast being in New York. Um, I really uh, highly recommend people going to IRL events, even if it's not your thing, it's not comfortable for you. Uh, whatever, just make the effort. Um, honestly, the best times were like hanging in the hotel with the Decentralized and Kramer and some other folks from the Puppets getting to meet those folks that you meet on the internet and obviously hanging out with you guys. We crossed paths a few times, but yeah, it was really nice to just chill, hang out a little quieter setting and go do some things on our own. For sure. That was kind of the best part. Me and y'all could be talked about it. Like it was cool, like meeting French Montana and stuff like that. But like chilling with you guys, man, was probably the, the probably seriously the best part, like being at the pub key and, uh, you know, just kind of hanging out like in the streets and stuff. But yeah. uh, Kramer, man, you, you, you had you had something happen to you while we we're there, bud. And actually, it's video footage of it, man. So <laughs> I'm actually going to uh, yeah, show so that real quick, man. man. I, I caught it's... a camera. Baby <laughs> the puppets, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? Hey man, you got a Bitcoin wizard shirt on? Yeah, dude. Hey, what's yeah, up? Yeah, dude, have you heard of these fucking puppets, bro? Yeah, yeah. What, you should grab one. Dude. Nah, I'm good. I'm no, good. Dude, it's Wait, you're than selling that. puppets off the sidewalk? Right? Yeah, dude, it's better than that stupid tapper wizard. Dude, come, on, man. Come, on, come on, come on, come on, bro, bro, dude. Look at wizards, puppets. Puppets look way cooler. I I, I don't buy ordinals off crack, bro. Though, man. Come on. What are you, bro? Come on, man. <laughs> uh, dude, I hope I never run into that guy ever. <laughs> 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 Someone's trying to sell you puppets off the sidewalk, bro. Dude, that's that's how crazy this puppet right? community is. Oh, I should have bought it. It was like definitely cheaper at the time. Uh, but that was all good fun. That was our good friend Eric BRC20 Coins. Uh, if you guys don't know, Kramer is an amazing director, and uh, it was it was awesome. And uh, look out for more stuff. It might be something with uh, us in it from Old Revolution. So definitely follow Kramer. It's what's your handle? I have it in the on the show. Uh, just Kramer America TV. Yeah, right behind you. Yeah, gotcha. All right, I guess we'll hop into our, our first thing here. Um, we always like to touch on the uh. Banners. Always like to touch on the Bitcoin price action first, and we'll jump right into that as I can show my screen here. All right, so it uh, looks like we're at sixty-two thousand one hundred and fifty-nine. Uh, we, we were really, we're still really ranging, right? So we, we finally hit the bottom of this range right here, and it looks like we're. Uh, so, what do you guys think? Do you think we we kind of uh, break through this? Uh, I guess you could call it support. It, it was support, and now uh, like it looking like we could. Potentially break through. What do you think? We're we gonna go down, or do you, maybe do you see uh, bounce? We'll start with Kramer. Yo, I mean, 
this whole cycle is so, I mean, we're, we're, we're seeing things we, we never seen before. We hit all time high before the halving. And now we're trying to kind of retrace back. Like everyone's like crying. We're going to like 50, 40 K right now on this dump before the halving. But I don't know, man. I, I, I like to believe that like expect the unexpected with Bitcoin. So For sure. um, I'm, I'm praying it goes back up. So what, what, what's, what do you think's uh like, what do you think is going to happen? Option A or option B? Yo, uh, you know, I, 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 I honestly, I could see it like playing around a little bit, but I, 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 I kind of believe we're going to go back up. I don't know why, but I do. All right. Same question, Jay. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, most of us believe up only over the long term. Obviously, the intermediate is what it is. Um, I know it looks like it kind of broke out of that channel, but if you look, like it seems like it, it hit resistance there before and kind of bounced back up uh, if you go a little bit to the left. But so, yeah, yeah like right there at the same price. So, yeah. you know, I don't know what made that channel kind of move. And everybody has their own, you know, uh, shout out to the Bitcoin Benjis with After Hours and Shitcoin Shaman. They definitely both have different styles. They were talking about this morning. One of them will be like, oh, I'm looking for this. And one of them is looking the other way. And and they just have their own style. So everybody's got their own style of what they see. And I, I just like to look at those like flat lines, keep it really simple. So until it really breaks that maybe like, you know, a little bit lower, what it called 61 mark, where it hit yeah. the very bottom of that other wick, that's when I would start to think it could maybe break down lower. Um, and that's something that they've beaten to my head, you know, lower lows, higher highs. And uh, so yeah, I, I think it could easily bounce if you do look like it had a pretty good up level there and it does look like yep. it's kind of bouncing back and forth a little. So hopefully it bounces back up and, you know, we can look to see if it breaks the, uh, the top side. I mean, I've been studying the last cycle and it's like I, I just keep thinking this last few weeks, like it just it reminds me of like January of 2021. If you look back at the chart, of, like it was kind of similar and then we shot up to like 60k and i I'm, i just i don't know like uh i just feel like uh this might be one of those situations but i'm you definitely said january not. of 2021 i, would, oh, I do yeah, remember that first week of january yep like a few happen? months before the last having or no that was yep. the year after okay yeah, you're over here. Right over here. Yeah. So right over here. Yep. Oh, you can't see my cursor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. January 21. So you're you're thinking we're we're in here. I mean, I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to break below a little there, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it does look technically again, yeah. Like so there was a range there, yeah. I mean, I can definitely see that. Yeah, man. All right, all right. I think, I think we're done with Bitcoin here. Jump back to here. Okay. So uh, uh, every day I like to give a quick uh, of roll call, kind of see who's here, because um, I'm paying attention, guys. I'm paying attention to see who's here every day. And uh, But we, we do a thing here where first is first. If you're first, it really means something on the show. And today we got uh, we got BitRens in that first spot. Congratulations, BitRens is here. And then we have Crypto Noob in the building, Howard Browder, Mr. Sheedy, always here. Uh, Danny, Danny was our second member. He missed being first member by 30 seconds. I'll always mm. remind him of that. Um, <laughs> we got uh, Um uh, Sogol, uh, John the Collector, Pelpa, uh, Kala, Wendy Yam, Thayan, Coach Katz. Welcome to the show. Your first time here. TKO in the building. Chief Axel, ASO, Chain Watcher, Cyber Rita, Ethereum Blockchain. Then we have Crypto Hot News. Here's every single day now. Uh, thank you, Crypto Hot News. Ant-Man, always in the building. Dan Watson. Uh, Achievio, your first time here. Uh, let's see. When we have Vax Zone, U USX. And then we have I Walk Alone. He's always here. He was first yesterday or a couple days ago. And then we have uh, Ichi Atoshi, Green Man, Bullish Zig, Yazir, always here. And then we have Kai Effect in the building, and that is your roll call today. Guys, please put your questions in the chat. We'll get to them in the ordinal after hour towards the end of the show. We really appreciate all your questions, so uh, jack us up with some questions, please. And then we'll head back over to our, our, our main thing here. So we got runes are three days away. Uh, they're coming. Uh, are you guys ready? What are you guys thinking? 
<laughs> not ready. I, I really, uh, I blew it, man. I don't have my note ready yet. Ugh. What about you, Jay? You ready? I mean, yeah, I'm ready for it to be here. Uh, I just, the pre runes thing kind of threw everything out of whack, I think. Like, you know, we thought we had all this time and then it was upon us, right? So now it's been, all we've talked about is ruined basically the last month. Obviously, other things have come and gone, but I've got my node ready. I really think the fee rates are just going to be so astronomical that it's not going to make sense. Um, we were talking a little bit beforehand, and I think secondary, even after maybe a little blow off period, might be the best way to go. Um, but obviously, DGENs are going to try and get in there early and often. So um, I might just kind of wait by the sidelines, but you never know. I might dip my toe into. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's kind of how it is. It's kind of like an explosion's happening on that block, right? And you kind of got to, you got to wait for the dust cells settles this kind of see stuff. If you jump into it, you're probably going to lose money. Uh, you're going to have some bigger players in here with a lot more power and a lot more, um, you know, a lot more experience using, you know, the Bitcoin blockchain than a lot of people. Do. So I think the best for anybody who's watching this show would be kind of, uh, kind of do your strategy there and just kind of sit back, wait a little bit, see what happens, wait for secondary to open. And kind of keep an eye on stuff and then maybe you know see what the price of secondary is see how much it costs a minute kind of look at the prices and be like okay this is 30 percent more but there's no chance to get front ran by buying on secondary and that, that's kind of what i'm doing as well i'm always going to have one one screen up showing me the price how much it costs to mint it and another screen up uh to kind of show me the thing and i'm i actually have a sat hunters ordinal so uh for me using sat hunter is going to be free to to use their service so i, I highly recommend if you don't have a node you could do that because it is free the ordinal is only 0 0.015 so i mean i think that's the way to go if you don't have your own node kramer so if it's not up and running by then yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, I guess uh, the next thing here would be opinion on rare sats inscriptions to be integrated into runes. So I was talking to Quarry. Uh, Quarry's a good friend of ours, and he he was basically saying how like potentially the uh, the person who gets the epic set on the next very next block could potentially uh, use it at, as a deploy inscription uh, and then deploy a token with the epic set, which actually could be the most epic token ever. What do, what do you guys think about something like that? Oh man, I'm so mad! I don't have my node ready. Oh my god! <laughs> I told you go, go to the store, go. buy one today. You can get there. Yeah, yeah, dude. That what, do you, sounds, what do you guys that, think? That sounds crazy. Um, I guess it would be a, a meme token, huh? Or what do you think? It could be anything, man. I mean, uh, you could just yeah, or like Marathon you know, you... gets it and decides to use it as like the pillar of their L two or something. Who knows? I mean, yeah, there's a lot of it. Just depends on who gets it, right? Um, yeah, I think it's good to have another use case. Uh, the exotic sat narrative has gone pretty flat. Obviously, I feel like we all talked about this before, um, but you know, just not a lot of volume collections like the commoners kind of fell by the wayside. Um, you know was a lot of hype around it just didn't really pan out maybe long term it'll have more of it but yeah this has been speculated on a little bit like are people gonna uh maybe etch which is like the deploy for runes and then have that be but we also saw that with deploys remember you know somebody did it on an uncommon for this one and then you know it has nothing to do with the other tokens that people get because the the original deploy or etch is going to be in the you know the original wallet so it's not like you receive any benefit other than like narrative, I guess. Um, yeah. But I, I could see like specific projects. This is kind of what I've said a few times about different like protocols and things that have bubbled up is I could see projects kind of build around this and have a cool idea around one specific style of rune and say, hey, if you want to etch these or mint these runes, it has to match the etching or whatever, put out some parameters like you've seen with like open collections like cypherpunks or like the pink eye movement that Decentralized put out and other things like that, where you look on chain, there's a rule set. If you complete it, then you get indexed and said rule set. Um, so maybe that'll be a pretty cool way that a project go about it, but I don't think it'll be like the standard, right? Like DGENs aren't going to go to setting, pluck out these palindromes, line them all up. You know what I mean? Like that's just a lot yeah. of work. And that's allegedly like what runes is supposed to be is like, point click go and you know magic happens yeah so would would, would would like if let's just say like a an uncommon set was a like a, a, a meme coin right would that give you more incentive to uh but it doesn't i guess i guess to your point it doesn't matter right because you're not actually getting anything on the common but the deployer right. would be an uncommon 
Would that would that yeah, make you feel it would have to fit the narrative of the project, right? Like just okay. to do it, and you know what I mean. Like I think that's what we saw is like people try this, or even somebody like a scribe would deploy to Satoshi's wallet, and it kind of tricked people for a little bit until they really looked on chain to see what happened, and they're like, "Oh, Satoshi made a BRC twenty. Like, no, he didn't. You know. So I think <laughs> there's going to be. I mean, there's going to be people experimenting, trying cool stuff. Are they trying to trick us? Are they trying to try cool stuff? I don't know. Um, could it run up? Number could definitely go up, but I just don't see like the long-term proposition value there. So for for you, you you probably wouldn't mint you wouldn't mint it no matter yeah. like you would unless if it was a project that made sense and they had a narrative that it all played well together. If it was just like, hey, I did this thing, go get it, you know, probably not. Yeah. What about you, Kramer? I mean, someone with some serious bags is going to be grabbing that set probably. Right. So it's it's gotta be someone that's got a plan. Maybe the epic one's different, right? But like the common one, yeah. No, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. All right. So before the show, we were kind of talking about uh Corey again. And uh he from Magisat uh is becoming a mempool marketplace. Uh what does this mean, Jay? Yeah, so the way it was explained, I heard him uh, announce it on the O show and I haven't played with it, you know, I scanned over it really quick, but uh this has been kind of talked about a little bit before. But essentially, until a purchase is confirmed, they're creating a marketplace for you to buy it still. So you could call it you know, an RBF tool, but they're really going for like a marketplace style branding. So what I was talking about earlier is if this takes another step forward, right? Magiset is cool, gets volume, but it isn't the main player. But say somebody like Magic Eden implements this. It would essentially make every item up for auction until the auctioneer, i.e. the block being confirmed, actually gets passed through. So it would be interesting because it literally takes all of the arbitrage out of things if the market decides so. Um, so like the fat finger would get pulled all the way up, even though it already does buy bots, it would essentially like stay in the pool and people could speculate on it. So maybe it would even be even higher speculation, right? So we might see even higher highs. Uh, if something like this is implemented. But yeah, it's definitely interesting because every tool is kind of coming to the forefront. So it won't be, you know, s shadowy figures in their hoodies, you know, doing coding things and, and sending out their minions. Now it's like services are going to provide this because they want to earn a service fee. Exactly. It's it's putting the tools in the hands of the people who are non-techie, right? So mm -hmm. I think that that's perfect. But uh, Kramer, what's your opinion on this? uh honestly i'm not really educated on it too much um yeah i don't really have an opinion on it man sorry gotcha but could if would you participate in, in uh a fat finger auction yeah definitely <laughs> sorry for those guys yeah. uh maybe they, they can even try and buy it back you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that <laughs> They should have like a yeah. baking button, like you could bake, like please. <laughs> but again, it's tuition, right? If you do it one time, you fat finger. Like I, I fat fingered uh, something before. What, what was that? I think it was like BitBoy's uh, NFT project on OpenSea. I fat fingered the cell on it, and uh, ever since then, um, I was was it was called Pluto Alliance. <laughs> it was like oh, it was back in 2021, 2022. But uh, ever since then, every time I do a cell. I make sure my zeros are correct, right? So again, when someone fat fingers something, that's tuition. They're paying tuition again. Like education is very expensive. So, uh, you know, at the, hopefully you you don't make the same mistakes twice. That's something I pride myself on doing. I'll never make the same mistake twice because uh, you know the the person who could could uh, potentially make the same mistake over and over is insane, right? So you got to be something got to be wrong with you to keep making the same mistake over and over. So hopefully uh, you learn from your mistakes. But that's really cool. Um, really, really cool tool from uh, Magisat, and yeah, I'm hoping um, Magic Eden does pick that up because that could actually gamify buying a little bit too. So, yeah, and just real quick, somebody in the space brought up a really interesting idea that I didn't have a great answer for, but like how you can RBF because you want something. Like sometimes, what if it's in the block, and and this was kind of like I, I joked about it, but like buying it back. But like, what if the price really does run, and there's an hour long block? Like it just creates all these game theory aspects that are just really interesting. And then how is somebody going to try and counter that? That was something that was talked about a little bit in the O show. And there's not really, you know, it's the Bitcoin blockchain. Like we're not changing 10 minute block times anytime soon. We're not changing any like real fundamentals. That's just kind of how the mentality is right now. So um, yeah, like the, the experimentation I think is just going to be next level this summer. Yeah. It's going to be fun to watch. Definitely going to be entertaining. Uh, you know, like, 
and I think the summertime is going to be absolutely crazy because everything's going to be up and running at that point, right? You're going to see a lot of the layer twos um, come that, that are that are talking about stuff. It's going to be really uh, doing doing you know layer two things like taking taking some stuff off of Bitcoin. Obviously, layer one is going to be congested as hell when runes drops, but eventually you might see a lot of these tokens going over to the these uh these l2s and stuff and have more trading over there which kind of stops congestion it was still be i think congestion after, after runes drops i mean especially um with uh common uncommon goods you're probably going to see congestion uh, you will probably we'll probably never see like a hundred v's ever again right do you think so under 100 v i do i just you do yeah I know, I know we've talked a little bit about it too, but like how this is going to put like a baseline in where people are going to want to do it. Um, but I think a lot of this just plays into psychology, right? Like how, what was most of Sats meant to that, right? Um, and that was after a run and BRC 20s was red hot for months and then it wasn't. So yeah. I just think that a lot of the human psychology is like, this is cool. This is cool. Okay. What's next? And that's just how we are, especially yeah. in this space, right? We have attention spans of gnats. We want the next <laughs> cool thing. Like, I, you know what I mean? And, I, and some are different than others or whatever, but like, this is just how this market flows. So um, I agree that like, that's why I have my note up is because I'm not about day one. It's about day one after the hype cycle. I yeah. want to start getting those at a lower fee rate. And maybe, yeah, it, I, I think you mentioned before, like you think this is going to be kind of what catapults us into this next higher levels into more of a super cycle is your yeah. theory. And, you know, others are worried, like, is this going to be the blow off top? I've been kind of leaning a little bit more towards, I thought, you know, like a lot like last year with OXBT, a lot of hype cycle. Everybody's focused on one thing. It comes out and then everybody realizes, well, it's something we can trade, you know, and then it's like, that's it. Right. So yeah. what's the next thing? And is there going to be a next thing quick enough after runes? Because I think there does need to be a next thing. And right now, I don't know what it is. I think BRC 20s and 2.0 is a little farther out uh maybe some project just like you know puppets takes fire and keeps going up and up yeah. and up but you know summertime also human psychology we're talking about it kids are out of school vacation time it's nice yeah. out right so the summer is time when even legacy and crypto markets tend to cool off a bit you don't think yeah. the swaps are going to save us the swaps i don't think that's till q3 q4 really yeah, I mean, Benari, you know, you were there, you know, yeah, he said the programmatic module is not going to be ready, you know, not, it's not going to be ready soon. White, you might see white module. Three, the next one. Yeah, that's, that's like, I mean, white module is good and it's better than nothing, but it's not programmatic swaps, right? You can't do AMMs. You can't do, right. uh, yeah, just like programmatically putting out a little bit of sats for verifying roll up blocks. All of the upper level things you want to do, they need the programmatic module. And that isn't yeah. going to be there, you know, fast enough. Right. I mean, there is some other players that are coming out with swaps too. So mm -hmm. or Solana. I mean, Solana is a is a viable option that's getting put out there. I don't really like it because I think the chain's going to turn off for six months at some point. But <laughs> For for now, whatever you know, if people can get a bridge that people will use and the market decides they want to do it, by all means. I just don't know if right is Solana going to be um, have more BRC twenties than like Merlin Chain, right? Or like if the L one point five swap comes out and things like that. Or there's other competitors that want to make swaps on L one. We talked to Bunzi in New York, other people yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Like there's going to be players that are competing, especially because. Unisat put it out open source. So even if they don't even like their own code, they could go grab Unisats and run with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I talked to somebody in New York. Um, I wonder, curious how you, how you guys feel about this, about a centralized uh, exchange with LP pools and stuff like that. So yeah, obviously you know how to, you, you can use Mexi and all that stuff, but how do you feel uh -huh. about using one with your Ordinals wallet that is just, it's just there by somebody who's, you know, very doxxed and in the space and stuff like that. Uh, how do you feel about using something like that? Like oh, you connect your wallet, you're able to make swaps and stuff, but it's very centralized. You're able to do LP pools, but it's very centralized. How do you feel ab about that? Get an LLC and a good CPA. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. What do you think? You got anything else for him? No, that's that's all I just said about that, man. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you what do you mean by that? Hold on, what do you, what do you mean by yeah. that, real quick? I mean, just everything. It's going to be attached to a sex. Like everything's going to go back to your bank account if you cash. Well, it no, out. It, it's not. So it's just it's 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 the the person that I was speaking to was saying how it's just going. It's to a be hybrid dex, right? Or like oh, okay. it's a, 
but the so back like, end is just them, you know, t- potentially manually doing everything. But it's gonna look, it's gonna look like a deck. swap as service type of thing. Exactly. Yeah, I remember that conversation? I mean, um, yeah, we'll see, man. I mean, well, I can answer for all of us. Uh, we're all in Merlin Chain, right? <laughs> I okay. mean, you know, what I mean? <laughs> like, yes, we, we've uh, we've voted with our seal bucks, right? So, I mean. It's all just at the end of the day, whether you're on Stacks, Merlin Chain, etc. You know, if you move yeah. off of Bitcoin right now, it's a multi-stick custodian with different layers, like uh, Bob Bodily mentioned. Right? We can get into the semantics of what what is different than this and that, but at the end of the day, they're all multi-stick custodians with different layers of well, security. For for staking and LPing for 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 this in um this this project I'm talking about mm-hmm. it, that's going to be that's going to be sending them you know your your stuff but to do right. swaps and stuff you're going to be you know potentially you're just you know you hit swap and then the swap happens right so okay it's not so like they would have a in pool that they would just ship it to you yeah exactly exactly mm-hmm. but they're so still custodying like all the LP yeah got ya. so I mean I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, I, I'd say put it on the market and see. That's the one thing I would say, though, is like even Uniset swap, like it had reasonable numbers, but nothing great. Like what did it peak out? Yeah. Like maybe 5 million or something locked in yeah. there. And then other swap competitors have been on the market, right? Like there's Ord Swap and a couple other ones. Put up one and two. Um, but yeah, like uh, it's just the volume, right? We want to follow the volume. If if anything, the biggest thing that we've done uh at Orange Cubicle or Ordinal Support Decks or shout out Ordinal Revolution for helping us along the way is we follow the volume, right? And we believe that China is going to be the yeah. volume of Bitcoin this this go around. North America has made a great run. I think puppets have reinvigorated the North American side, but I still think at the end of the day that uh, you know China is going to lead the way in this bull market if it's going to be a Bitcoin centric one. China number one. China number one, and, uh, and and you brought this up too. Sorry, but the Merlin chain—they call the Merlin chain their chain, right? Yes. And I think that's a big thing to remember, right? Like they don't think Ethereum is, they don't think Solana is, they don't think any of the, these other ones are, but they have, you know, a correspondence with Jeff, and it goes and it comes, and, and it's going to be different. But ideally, it is a chain that they've had the say in. It'll become more decentralized over time with the validating system and everything else that's rolling out. And if if it is, you know, going to stay their chain, I think it has a future. And you know, they are the ones who got got probably going to get a lot of this Bitcoin that is you know in the seal because they you know there's wallets with like 30, 40 Bitcoin in it that are you know way more than than I had in there. And mm-hmm. you, you control the token. You control the chain. So if China ends up with a lot of these Merlin tokens, which is the way it looks like right now, uh, they control the governance of the chain, right? So technically, it could be their decentralized chain, but you know, very centralized being China. But you know, it, they they hold they could potentially hold sixty percent, fifty one percent, and do the things that they want their chain to be, right? Mm-hmm. Which is you know which is big. So, and, um, you know, I, I don't mind that. I don't, I think, you know, I'm okay with uh, China being number one. You know what I mean? Honestly, I'm okay. Cause as long as I can make, you know, uh, my pennies, uh, you know, and just kind of follow them. I mean, they made me a lot of money with BRC twenties. They made me a lot of money with ordinals and I think they're going to make us a lot of money with runes. So I mean, well, use this anecdotal through, uh, customs, uh, going to Bitcoin Asia. <laughs> <laughs> Just yes, no, thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, basically. But I mean, we've we've all been we're all pretty laid back. I'd say North America, especially like U.S. Uh, citizens, yeah. pretty laid back. You know, everybody differs, obviously. But if you've ever like interacted with a, a Chinese speaking space um, or like an Asian space, right? They give you like a full agenda. Here's what we want to talk about, like not in a bad way or whatever. They're just very well organized. They want to hit all the points. They want to have flow yep. and just yep. get through the agenda and move on because everything's very organized. Is it every single one? No, whatever. I'm just saying that's very anecdotal from somebody who spends a lot of time on spaces and ad hoc things. And, and that's much more my style as well. But just, yeah, that's every single time, you know, Mr. J, the first time I started working with him, gave me this, you know, big old thing. And I was just like, OK, I guess we're ready. Thank you. <laughs> you know. But yeah, just uh, an anecdotal thing. I think that kind of says a lot to that too. Like they're the professionals, and if they want to be professional, let them run with it. I agree, 
and then we we can just follow along, right? And just kind of like uh, you know, and then dump our bags when they dump their bags. But they they hold their bags. That's why rats is still like a hundred two hundred million dollar market cap. Just to, to add to that point, I mean, we have a lot of these freedoms. We can do all this stuff. We're on here, right? They don't. Period. Yeah. Like there's a camera over their shoulder, so they're trying to create an experience that we take for granted. Yep. So they have motivation, like they have social motivation to create things that give them the things that they see us with all the time. I'm in the state of New York. I feel that way too, man. It's like you're so limited over here with stuff. Yeah, man. All right. Well, our next topic here. I see a lot of comments in the chat as well about this. So, um, uh, min, uh, mineral the 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 liquidity LP pool uh, deployed by the project suffered unauthorized access and the official liquidity added by the team has been stolen. Uh, the main is complete bullshit. Uh, I think that mineral just sucks. They suck as a project. They suck at everything, everything they've done so far uh, besides release the mineral has been awful. And I feel like they went in and they, they, they took their money out. Uh, obviously it's their money. They can do whatever they want. But and by, by doing that, they rugged everybody that's holding the MNER token. Uh, the mineral staking is earning almost nothing over there. I have 50 of them over there um, staking. I'm an asshole for not for, for locking them in Merlin because I was not able to sell them when they reached $2,000. I missed out on a hundred thousand dollars off that. It might've been one of my biggest losses, but I'm only in, I only think I paid about $2,000 for the minerals in the beginning. So it wasn't maybe four thousand. So it wasn't that big of a deal. So in the, at the end, I'm only losing four four thousand, but it got up to a hundred grand. Right. So mm. uh, I'm just done with mineral. I want them to go away. Uh, just leave the ecosystem. They're shit stain on on the Merlin chain, and they're just not. They're not anything I thought they were going to be, and they're just done. And I think that they should just go away. And then I think Jeff should uh, just airdrop everyone. Emmy. Uh, airdrop everyone who's whole staking these and holding these the merle token as a you know a thank you for participating early right so um what do you guys what do you guys think about this i mean that would be really generous like if jeff did that i don't know if he feels <clears throat> any responsibility with it i mean minerals was one of the first uh projects that get staked in there right with the brc yeah. mornings the the first yeah yeah so i don't know man like from the last cycle, there was a lot of projects like this uh, where you grab their NFT and then you would be collecting their tokens. And um, dude, it, like, I there was so, there was a member in the OSD that went heavy, and I was like, bro, like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, and um, yeah, I don't I don't want to say I told you so, but man. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was something we talked about a lot, right? Like uh, this model, if you just sit down on paper, seems like it should work. It seems intuitive that it would work. But for whatever reason, every time it's executed, it doesn't work. So uh, unfortunately, it seems like that's what happened again. And there were some signs on the wall, uh, you know, some stuff happened in a space a while back, et cetera. Um, they deployed, you know, uh, white paper, whatever preliminary paper that nobody really liked that had some kind of curveballs in it with more assets, you know, more tokens that people didn't like the distribution, et cetera, whatever. Um, so yeah, I, I echo your, uh, sentiment. Uh, it's unfortunate, but it's also a good point that you, A, got in at your lowest point you could. Um, but maybe is also a lesson, you know, keep some on the sideline only, you know, you're okay with losing it. Right. And luckily you've had some big wins where you can eat this one, but you know, if you could replay it, maybe you do half. Keep half I wouldn't on do the any. Side of it. <laughs> well, right, right. But I'm just saying like, at least hedge your bets. Right. So this is just a good example of where like, had you kept half on the side, yeah. you could recoup some, got some good gains and then also had your staking preliminary down the line stuff you know, hopefully work out better than this situation. But yep. um, yeah, just definitely, you know, Jeff doesn't have to do anything. He's already been more than generous with a lot of different things. Um, but I think that would be a very good resolution. And I'm sure that he is not happy with what happened as well. Yeah, I mean, you got to remember, everyone who participated in in in, in Mineral, uh, you you guys were basically on the test net. There was no Mineral test net. I mean, there was no the Merlin chain test net. If there was, it was like, three days long right it was mm -hmm. it was not it was like boom here you go just so the buttons and hope it works yeah <laughs> yeah so technically you know i know i'm just you know putting the idea out there and just putting it in the world right that you know maybe airdrop you know the the mineral and i am one of them so i'm a little biased to this 
but airdrop the the stakers and the holders of of this you know just a little bit just a little, yeah. little, little much you know just, just right. a little bit minor you know a little uh, i missed that just like you shizzy yeah so it would it would just be i thought i just think that you know it's like it, that would solve all the issues you know what i mean e even if it's just like all right you guys are the early participators here you go you know so but but i did earn so it got it did get to like a bitcoin and a half so for like two months you earn that, points I was off of earning it, right. insane yeah. amount of points so yeah. and it's yeah. just it's unfortunate like honestly a project like this and it's a proof of stake chain right so this is a big beef i had on ethereum because i was a, an ethereum miner for several years uh along with like bitcoin and litecoin but i did not like the merge like i did not like the fact that it was just cutting off where you came from this yeah. is how it was entirely built and you're choosing to just throw that out the window I think a hybrid system is really interesting, right? What if Mineral would have dual mined uh, Merlin blocks, right? So yeah. you still have the validating system, but then it's borrowing some of the hash power, even if it's synthetic, right? Even if it's through this token, I just think that that, that uh, MNER token, excuse me, with the Merle token and something like that would have been so cool to try. And I, I really hope somebody does try that eventually because I think a hybridized system makes a lot of sense. You have the proof of stake model, which was tried and true. And I think that the proof of stake only model is going to see problems in the future. Yeah. I, I was actually you know, like like maybe thinking about something like that, like like forking Bitcoin a little bit and then, you know, obviously speeding it up and all that stuff. And then mm. having a governance token as well as your your proof of stake and then also having the, the proof of work and the proof of stake would would cover some of the stuff and the proof of work would cover some of the stuff. So it's a, a kind of mixture of both type of yeah. thing. Well, as well, you should talk to decentralized. Maybe you could write a proposal for his chain. <laughs> I want to. I mean, yeah, we'll see what happens. You know, if we, we we get behind it, we might be able to push this thing. <laughs> hey, <laughs> world peace. Maybe he rebrands this whole chain to that, right? Let's get it. Uh, and any last comments on this, uh, Kramer? No, man. I just uh, it would be really nice if Jeff did something for that. I, I don't feel like he's like totally responsible. For Things. No, he's not responsible at all. But it's just one of those things where you know it's basically testnet, and you get rewarded normally for playing with testnet with real money. So, and they ripped off Starcraft. That, that kind of <laughs> <laughs> all right, heading to our next one. This just gets bad, from bad to worse. But uh, how bad did Jason Fang and Sora mess up? Are are they done in the Bitcoin ecosystem? So yesterday, if you guys don't know, uh, me and Yagobi talked about it yesterday. How they put out this thing, and they were like, uh, I guess they saw the price of, of the stone, right? Of uh, uh Leonisa stone, and was like, oh, that's that's like six grand, and we know there'd be no problem to put a thousand on, but didn't realize how much you're gonna, you're trying to extract thirty million dollars from your tiny little community that your your karma token is is worth like nothing. And then yesterday, the karma token and the karma card just obliterated. I mean, I think the karma card's down like eighty percent, the token's down like sixty five percent, seventy percent. Uh, did Jason Fang uh, and Sora like mess this up? What do you guys think? Go ahead, Kramer. Oh man, this is where greed bites you in the ass. You know, it's like I mean, us we we've seen all these kind of plays before, and it's like we we kept talking talking about how all these people from ETH are going to be coming into this, and you're going to see all these like same kind of scams, like kind of similar to the mineral thing. And uh, yeah, dude, like a thousand anything that's like. A ridiculous mint price like I'm, I'm always like skeptical and like uh yeah it just it just rubs me the wrong way every time it just comes off so grifty and uh a karma coin like i mean a thousand dollars for some karma come on man that's <laughs> it's just like you can't even write that joke man it's like so crazy well, the fact that it was in usd it wasn't even in that's Bitcoin. right yeah yeah right. Well, you just so how PayPal account yeah. or something like that's ridiculous. Yeah, um, I definitely think it just shows uh, how out of touch they are. And uh, yeah, I've had words on that ecosystem before. So I'll just leave it as like, I just don't think uh, they really understand what's going on. And to compare, you know, Jason and Jeff, you know, night and day, right? Jeff always does the stand up thing, uh, yeah. always tries to listen to the community, but has to make a decision at the end of the day and uh just the karma ecosystem exact opposite you know what was the token doing what was the karma card for and none of those questions were answered and the next thing was ran to and then botched so 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I do hope that you know they move along and uh, had a different way. Yeah, I I I, I agree with that. I think uh, you know you, you kind of just see that Jason's a VC, right? We we thought that he was a part of ordinals and stuff, but in reality, he's just here for liquidity, and he's just trying to just you know trying to get solar ventures as much money as possible, which is his job, right? It's fine, but that's not something we do here at Bitcoin. And if he can just walk, walk his, his little, his little sort of ventures back to Ethereum, that will just make us all happy. Uh, it's kind of like to your point there, just, just go away. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. You're not a Bitcoiner. You are an Ethereum uh, guy and just, just go back. Right. So. Yeah. I think he made some bad bets and he's trying to recoup funds. Yeah, I, I that was something I was thinking too. It, it, they bought a lot of track at five dollars, right? and now it's like two dollars and ninety cents. So he's trying to recruit. Yeah. And what, what's that, that doing uh, lately, right? Yeah. But what uh, was he just the play asking for USD. Like, there's got to be something with that. That's it, right. it's just That's so weird. They're, they're not Bitcoiners. They're just you know it just yeah I don't know. Maybe he's expecting Bitcoin to drop a little bit, and he just wants to make sure they, they get their thousand dollars. Like you know, it's just. It's sad. It's sad. But uh, our next one's a little, a little bit better here. Enough of this uh, downward stuff. We got the BitBoy One, right? I love the name. I love the name, the BitBoy One. The first ever Web3 gaming device powered by Gamify and Deepin. Uh, what well, can you tell us about this, Jay? Uh, you know, obviously, when you, by by minting this ordinal, do you get the, the device itself? Like, how does this work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I was lucky enough to get some guaranteed. Uh, they opened it up yesterday. So basically, if you had your spot, uh, the timer counted down, you clicked a few buttons, you did have to like put in your address, dox yourself, et cetera, because obviously they're shipping it to you. Uh, maybe you could work out, you know, P.O. Box or something, obviously. But uh, yeah, it was a really smooth process. Um, I accidentally paid twice on one wallet because I was just trying to make sure I got it through. And OKX, it just looked a little backwards, but I went in, made a ticket. They refunded me. I don't even I didn't even check. Uh, but I'm assuming it's on its way. They've been really helpful, and I'm super excited about this. Uh, it's supposed to ship by the end of the year. I'm hoping that that's just like a little bit of runway, and maybe we see it by the fall. Love to let little man play with it before Christmas. Um, but yeah, uh, they say that you're going to be able to earn Bitcoin. I wonder if they leave out the fractal part. Uh, I think it's going to have yeah. ties with Unisat's fractal Bitcoin. Um, but BRC20s easily could be integrated into this. Um, I've been interested in OPI network the open protocol uh indexing that binari from best in slot and everybody's building so if you wanted to run you know hundreds of thousands of nodes what would be a better way than put it in kids hands that are playing video games right so i think this is really a, a beta run on on more and more things you're going to see on the hardware side that they want to do things in the background to make their system decentralized um, but also, what if they made a cold storage uh, wallet version of this or something? I don't think you should make this your absolute cold storage. Obviously, it's going to have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and be interactable. But maybe it'd be a cool, like, intermediate one. Oh, you know, I leave my gaming BRC20 tokens on this and I can take it with me and travel and play. Um, it just, yeah, it throws back, you know, they know who they're marketing to. They're marketing the 80s kids, right, that are on Bitcoin. And it, I think it's awesome. I got two. I'm hoping to get a third, the first come, first serve. I mean, it, it could be a hardware wallet too. If you think like like a cartridge, right? You put the cartridge in, you send the Bitcoin there. You the air gap one, yeah, yeah. So I was well. I was in a space with Mr. J when they actually like first kind of announced this, and I was really surprised they said they were making a hardware play. But now that I've seen it and like seen a lot of the demos and stuff, it makes perfect sense. I think. Yeah. I think think uh, after hours said this. Think Saga. You know the Saga phone for Solana, Bitcoin. Yeah. That's all you got to do. Yeah, and that's a they were selling on get. eBay for like five K sealed. Like in yeah. five years, ten years down the road, what does the iPhone sealed pay for? What is, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, Bitcoin memorabilia. I think you know that's a great one. The Bitboy one. You know what's Bitboy eleven going to look like, right? Right. <laughs> Bitboy, dude, virtual mm. Bitboy headset. Well, dude, what do you think? Of like the ordinal, the three D asset is sweet too, right? Go check it out on Ord.io. I love, yeah. yeah shout out to Ord.io and Leonidas making that like AR like easy and, and interoperable. I think that's huge. Um, other people like BRC four twenties, Jeff should definitely be looking into doing that. I think just those simple little features that uh, websites and other things can integrate, especially mobile, are huge. Um, yeah, I think that was like something that makes Ord.io kind of push itself into the forefront more. For sure, for sure. What, what do you think on all this, Kramer? 
I mean, dude, it's honestly, it's making me kind of wish I had kids because uh, that would be one of their chores is to play with the flavor <laughs> for the fam. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is another thing where it's like an expensive mid 0.01. I don't have the whitelist. So I I don't know, man. Like it does. I it, I do feel the FOMO a little bit. It is a really cool product. Um but at the end of the day, it's an emulator, man, <laughs> for 0.01 <laughs> on Android. <laughs> it's like, yo, it better pay off. Yeah. yeah. I mean, think of the airdrops, though. I mean, how are they not going to airdrop the first hardware device to come out on Bitcoin that's partnered with Unisat? No, I mean, yeah. just, for sure. I'm just being a cheap yeah. old and I, Yeah, not financial. Can't guarantee anything. But look look at what the saga phone. If they're going to follow any path, they're going to try and follow that one, which A, I like I said, was selling, it was like 500 bucks. You could sell it sealed for on eBay for like 5K. The bonk that you got for it literally was like 5X, depending on when you sold it or more. So, yeah. I mean, that and that's, they still could easily do stuff, right? They could still easily pass stuff out over time. Yeah, it is cool. I guess I'm a little salty. I didn't get the whitelist. So. Fair. Well, I, I heard somebody might be giving one away in Nashville, so hopefully you can. Oh, that. gosh. Shout out DJ. <laughs> you can't say the rest guy. of his name, though. Put the knee pad <laughs> suitcase right now. There you go. Oh man, yeah, I, I definitely want one now. Uh, if it, can I buy one on, on secondary? Like, can I? Like, is is what's is that? How it's going to work or no? I don't know exactly because you put in your shipping info like gotcha. right off the bat. So I think it's just kind of a locked up thing. And then you're going to get gotcha. dropped like the ordinal as a memento. I'm not a hundred percent sure about that. Honestly, I was happy to get in when I could and just kind of went from there. So still kind of figuring out exactly what's going to happen, joining the discord, asking questions. Yeah, I definitely want one of these. I think, you know, I, just, I mean, just alone, too. Like, I, I love the idea of uh, potentially Haro Wallet. And, like, you could just put a little chip in there somewhere. I'm not sure exactly what it looks like, but there's, like, a cartridge mm -hmm. spot. You know, you put your cartridge in. You know, you send your Bitcoin yeah. out. You put a cartridge out. You know, you're, it's air gap. You lock, you lock that cartridge away in a yeah. safe or something, you know, and then you're ready to put your Bitcoin. That that will be perfect. And I give it to my yeah. kids and be like, you want you want to eat today? You better play some, some Bitman. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, de I definitely want to talk more with Seth. So the, and the founder, yeah, and uh, these are all great ideas. I'm sure that they're looking into stuff. And obviously, you just got to get a model out there, right? And then you can make a model that's a light version. You can make a model that's a hardware wallet, right? You just have more options, but you got to see it out the door and have people actually want it, which I think definitely people do. Hundred percent. We're getting to the back end here, guys. Please put your questions in the comments. So uh, in, in the after hour, we'll get to all your questions. We really appreciate the questions. It really helps us go uh, move forward. But uh, our, we have a few more topics here before we get to there. Uh, we have, if the R2C20s uh, cannot eliminate the transfer inscriptions, will they be confined to Layer 2 only, fractical, bi fractical Bitcoin, after runes? Are, th are they going to be an L2 play after runes, do you think? We'll start with you, Kramer. Hmm. I mean, I don't really see BRC 20s as like a layer two, honestly. And I think everything according to Benari, I mean, I think the upgrades are going to happen. Yeah, I, I'm very bullish on BRC 20s. I mean, I, obviously I'm back biased, but um, yeah, yeah I, I think I think it's going to work, man. Well, the only problem is I, I just can't see them eliminating the transfer description unless unless they do a full protocol change, right? And I mean by full protocol change is, is burning one side and giving you giving you a different type of uh, token. I can't I can't see these just being able to just not do transfer transfer inscription. And it seems like everything I'm reading, it's all going to be on a layer two, right? Everything that that they're they're building and stuff is like practical Bitcoin, which is bridging in and and getting a receipt on the other side. But what, what, what do you think, Jay? Same question. Yeah, I mean, the swap is like, yeah, layer 1.5. But at the end of the day, if it's not like purely on Bitcoin, like I, it's a layer two, right? Yeah. So, yeah, even like because fractal Bitcoin and the OPI and indexing, you know, that's all different. They, they have a lot of components that inter, you know intertwine and are important to each other. But these are all different, like companies building different things and have their own needs. So, um, yeah, I think that there'll be, you know, different avenues, different services that come out of each one. Um, I, I think this is possible. I don't know exactly how it would be if it would have to be dropped there. I know it's been mentioned and I don't know like the exact, uh, parameters around it, 
But yeah, I, I mean, it is a big hurdle. And like technically runes is kind of doing it. If you want to sell, you know, say there's a thousand rune J25 tokens and I want to sell you 25, you have to put it in a separate UTXO, but it's being done in the background with your one transaction, right? So as long as people can click one button and not have to do two steps, um, yeah, it has seen a lot more trading on sexes. It has been bridged over to like Berlin or even like Solana, right? And then maybe that's a liquidity play or an efficiency play or, or transaction fee play. Um, but yeah, the market is definitely signaling like we want something else. So maybe the swap is it. But like you said, like bridging is still maybe it can get to be trustless with the programmatic modules. And that would be a huge breakthrough. But like we said, it's still months, quarters, maybe a year plus away before even like high level experiments would probably start on stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's why people are going for runes. Right. That's why it's the yeah. talk of the town. So. So a lot of these projects are like making their bets on both, right? You're it can interchange, it can go back and forth. So that way if it comes out. So I've even gone more to that side where I think they'll play nice enough with each other for a period of time. And maybe next cycle it's really like the throwdown, like, okay, who's like the real standard on Bitcoin after we, everything shakes out? Yeah, for sure. I, I'm thinking obviously runes is gonna be standard. Uh, you know, Casey developed ordinals, Casey putting runes in the ordinal in ordinal theory you know it's just it's going to be that way but brc 20s will always be legacy i think brc 20s will be collector's items you can't ever make more of them most of the stickers are going to be like out and the the, the ones that are, are do well will be just kind of like collector's items right which wow. is it's just still huge i just don't see the volume ever getting insane again it's just more people just holding them and collecting them and oh i have some brc 20s from the first year ordinals drop right i'm talking like a 10 years from now but i mean obviously in the I, land I, of stamps yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, exactly. And then you have, you know, your own your own chain economy, which is runes and which is in ordinal theory. And Casey doesn't like BRC twenties, right? And a lot of times, like it, you know, Vitalik's a god. You know what I mean? The guy from Solana is a god. Whatever they say, people normally adopt. You know, so but we'll we'll see. I don't think BRC twenties are dead. I just think they're going to get into a legacy collector's items uh, type Fair. of type I'll, of thing. I got a counterpoint though. So yeah, um, well, I think. I think Casey's shown with the building of runes, right? Like he took his ball and said, no, we're going to do it. The having your guys' implementation doesn't count, right? That's very, you know, not decentralized. As we said, China wants decentralized, open, free. So I feel like sure. their boat is with BRC 20s. Obviously, Leo's runestone has gotten a lot of favor, especially from the Chinese community as well. But I think that's that one specific project. I don't know if it's on a protocol level, right? So the, the big thing with BRC 20s, I'd say, kind of uh moving into that is is casey going to incentivize people to run the ordinals client ever i don't think so whereas uniset yeah. will so uniset is rebuilding the ordinals client the, you're going to run opi which i've been doing since it come out they are gonna do things that require you to run bitcoin core the ordinals client of their build along with an, an additional indexing and maybe in the light form, like we said on the BitBoy or on an old cell phone, Casey's not. So, yeah. I mean, that's one thing that I think that has to be considered is like, there's a business being built around there. Casey's a Rust developer that's done amazing things and shout out to him, but he's not turning into a marketplace. He's not building an entire ecosystem out like step by step all the way like Unisat has with layer one foundation going up to Alex Labs, et cetera, all those partners with OKX Binance, et cetera. Right. This is a couple guys that are doing amazing things, but at the end of the day, I just don't see them turning it into something that can compete with Unisat. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Honestly, that's a really good point. Um, because Casey's not, I mean, he he talked about this light client thing. Uh, potentially everyone's gonna be running their own little like light client of Bitcoin and you're gonna be able to do, you know, your trading and stuff and, and stuff you using that and that potentially could be incentivized. I don't think Casey would want Casey doesn't want to do gonna it build because that. A team of developers are gonna build that. Exactly. Exactly. But if it if it gets Casey's stamp of approval and that and that company issues a token and incentivizes the users of this client for that token and Casey has a stamp of approval, it could potentially be something you know so yeah i mean i think that's what we'll see with runes is is casey's stamp of approval does that matter as much as some hope it does or not and that's yeah. what really has to play out over the next year however long i think i agree uh kramer anything from you bud uh i mean 
everyone I keep getting hearing it, excited about runes is like a majority of them. They missed out on the BRC twenty ordinal wave, and they're like counting on this one. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. But, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to capitalize on this, right? I made a bunch of money no, on BRC twenties, sure. but I got a lot of Bitcoin sitting there. Well, that yeah, I want to, you're uh, just looking at it as a trade, right? You you don't yeah, even yeah. care what protocols on it. It could be on the upside down <laughs> protocol on the XYZ, right? I mean, so, dude. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like it's three three months from now, I mean, who's gonna come out with another protocol after this? You know, it's like, and I'll probably be on that, right? I like being early. I I, yeah. I treat everything like a Ponzi. I get in early and I get out early. I buy when my stomach hurts and I sell when my stomach hurts, right? And I'm mm -hmm. like, when rats is doing ten x's, I'm sitting like, oh, so my rats. But I made fucking twenty thirty. I made like twenty thirty x on, on racks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that was insane to me at the time. So it was just one of those things where, you know, I just treat everything like a Ponzi. I love ordinals. Uh, you know, um, I love like I'm eventually gonna buy back a lot of the stuff I sold to get more liquid, but um, I'm gonna buy them hopefully back at a cheaper price when when runes is really out of control and people are just dumping all their money in the runes. I'm gonna be reaching over, selling my runes, and then reaching back and grabbing my quantum cats, my node monkeys, my puppets, and stuff like that. The stuff that I truly believe in long term, right? So do I believe in runes? I don't like meme coins. I'm not a meme coin guy. This is just this is just a way for me to. But if you can stake it someday, right? Maybe, right? Because you're more of a that. That becomes that becomes different. That's mm -hmm. a completely different story. I, I anything but I hold, I like ready, to earn right? on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if I can't earn on it, pockets. What's up? I said you can't swim with rocks in your pockets. <laughs> that, is, that is very true. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess yeah. It depends how many rocks too, right? <laughs> but, all right all right uh next topic here okay this is our last topic for today we have uh the merlin seal is closed assets being released uh what are your thoughts we'll start with kramer uh yo i mean um as someone that's got uh funds locked up in a lot of these different little platforms and stuff i'm excited to see this one open um i think it's been pretty good i i mean there's like one wallet where i've had issues with it's mainly the particle wallet but yeah. um i mean I enjoy liquidity farming. I've been playing with Hoo and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about Merlin, man. I, I really like Jeff Bitmap Tech, Tech, uh, Bitmap Tech. Jeff is like, he's a really cool guy, man. He comes into the spaces all the time and he seems like a real dude. So I, I'm very bullish on it. 100%. Jay. Yeah, I think we're all uh, really focused on Rune. So this kind of fell by the wayside, but uh, I'm glad that it's about that time. You know, ideally, I wish it would have maybe happened a little bit earlier, but I know there's a lot of coordinating steps. Um, I'm really looking forward to some of the games that have been, you know, highlighted, like the Dragon Ball game, uh, the the wand, uh, some of the bitmap integrations and things like that. And I know Jeff is looking for more people to build and things like that, but it's, it is hard to do this kind of stuff. And hopefully the layer two is going to open it up more. Um, but yeah, I think it's just time. People are ready to get their assets back. It'll obviously impact prices of things. Um, we're seeing a little bit of a sell-off across ordinals right now, right? So, you know, there's going to be a lot of things that are opening back up, right? Like puppet owners that put it in there have astronomical gains. There's not a ton of them, you know, so maybe it's a short blip on the screen, but like different collections have more of them in there. Uh, obviously, the minerals getting released could be an utter catastrophe, you know? So it, this is what happens with staking. There, there's probably going to be a dump. But can the next things get people staking as a validator with the Merle token, get people using things with their bitmaps or their wands or whatever? So, uh, yeah, it's going to be time to like start delivering a little bit more substance, in my opinion. Yo, I'm kind of yeah. worried about bitmaps right now. Like, what's going to happen with bitmaps? Like, a third of the supply is in the Merlin seal. It's a great example, yeah. Bitmaps are going to get wrecked. I mean, it's yeah. point blank. Once you're able to get those bitmaps out of the point blank, unless uh, they can do something to where Jeff's like, hey, if you stake your bitmaps, we're going to earn more of this Merle token. You got to remember, he's holding all the Merle token, right? Mm -hmm. He's he's probably allocated like 60%, 70% to different areas, 20% going to the sealers. There's still probably some allocation that's still available, and that's why I said maybe give some to the Merlin, uh, the the mineral guys, right? So there's still there's might be something where, hey, he, he needs to keep – um, some stuff locked up. He needs to keep liquidity in 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 there. There might be a play to where, hey, uh, if you lock your bitmaps up, you know you you're gonna get uh, you're gonna still get get some merle token. Hey guys, mm -hmm. you know you're gonna earn merle token. So there might be still some stuff in play that they're working on right now to get that. Well, they stuff mentioned restaking. Yeah. Okay, so restaking will be something then. 
Yeah, yeah. I think they had okay. that in the space the other day as well. Yeah. And uh, I don't know the specifics of it or anything, obviously. But yeah, I mean, there's going to be some sort of restaking probably for a lower rate or whatever, you know. Yeah. But but they need to get beyond that simple incentive, right? Like that's not going to have the same bang as it did the last time, right? It's restaking. It's not initial yeah. staking. You know, it's not going to be the same amount. So they need to have some experiences coming out that let you go do something. Because that was really the play is layer one assets that let you go do things on layer two and i get it jeff has built this l2 brought in partners and things like that yeah. mineral not so good merlin swap much better other ones yeah. in between but now it's about these specific projects really showing what they've been building and i 100 agree and for me like the me locking my stuff in here was really easy uh we, we've been friends with jeff since april i mean i'm sorry since uh july and uh you know we, we've had him on the show I mean, I think five times now, and mm. we've had a lot of all, like all, off calls. He, like we, we tested some stuff out from in, in the early days with BRC four twenty and with Bitmap, um, that thing that he had with the running around stuff. We were the first people to deploy, uh, besides Block Toshi, deploy a, a thing over there to kind of just mess around and kind of showcase it. So we we've had conversation with Jeff. We trust Jeff. Uh, you know what I mean? He's basically docs to us. You know, we, we we so that was easy for me to put. You know what what I put in there. I put like over a few bitcoin so it it's, feels a little bit uncomfortable now because i just kind of want it out and into my back into my harder wallet because i did I, I do have a full bitcoin in there and then about a couple bitcoin worth of other stuff so it did feel like towards the end there a little bit uncomfortable because like you know i, I sold my no monkey that's all like that so i'm adding stuff to back to my my hardware wallets and stuff so it's like i do want to get that stuff out and back into the safe spots because it is feeling a little uncomfortable but besides that like i trust jeff 100 percent. but mistakes do happen you know so yeah i but think it's yeah, just time man. right yeah it's been yeah. periods up it's time for you know people to have the choice 100 and that leads us into uh the ordo hours over and that leads us into the after hours here and in the after hours we kind of like to just uh get, get the community involved right go through all the questions and stuff like that so i'm going to go through each thing and if you guys have anything to say about it please just uh, we'll stop there and we'll just talk about it so uh let's see let's see let's see we got um sheedy said almost here uh miss sheedy was early enough okay and then how early Okay, what's this question? How early do y'all get here? So degen. Oh, I guess talking about the people. All right, let's get to the eleven o'clock. There's a lot of comments before eleven o'clock. All right. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Everybody's trying oh, to get dude. that first one now. You made it a game. <laughs> I gamified it, right? So it helps out. But uh, oh dude, the coins oh. I had on that exchange, I had so many doge on there. Oh, I guess he's talking about Kramer's story. He had he had the same thing happen to him. No, so uh, Big bird, we're looking for you, dude. <laughs> Uh, here's a question. Uh, we saw that Ben Schiller came out and said he's creating Bitmap 420. Did you guys see this at all? No. What was that? I saw a little post, but I didn't dive into it right before we got on. I haven't dived into it either, but he tagged me in it. I'm going to go back and, and read it, but he's creating something oh. Bitmap 420. I don't know if he's forking 420 and putting the bitmaps over there or something. I don't know. It, so it sounds like a really, really cool idea. I'm uh, excited yeah. to uh I know he's picking the recursion that. and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, it'd be cool if uh, you can use assets and bitmaps. I mean, yeah. Yeah, for Wait. sure. <laughs> okay, we have here. We said we have launched the Merle token next week. Any strategy, guys, to buy as more tokens in a good spot? Buy them all once or DCA. So he's asking, um, what do you, what you guys plans for the Merle token? Obviously, you're getting some. Uh, do you plan on buying some or just dumping the ones you have or are receiving? Kramer, that's the, that's the the mm -hmm. question of the hour, man. You hold the airdrop. I still have a decision. Yeah, I don't, we'll see where it runs. But um, yeah, I mean, all the airdrops I've been getting, I, I've pretty much been holding all of them. I don't know if that's smart or not. But so you're you're going to be holding this, or you dump it a little? I I'm not making a decision right now. <laughs> you got to make it now, Kramer. You got to make it right oh, now. He's nudging you. Yeah, <laughs> take some profits, bro. Yeah, yeah, all right, Jay, no, same you. question. Yeah, you're doing all right. You got some puppets still. You're right. But uh, I mean, I think DCAing is always a wise decision. Of course, I'm not a financial analyst or provider or anything like that. But uh, just having options, right? Like literally the best people I listen to are the ones that tell me it's a coin flip over and over again, right? Yeah. They say the chart shows this. The chart's giving me this. Stochastics, whatever they're looking at, this gives me that, right? It's not I feel, I think, any of that. But at the end of the day, I mean... Some of the best people I talked about will literally say, just flip a coin and go with it, right? We're making bets. 
we don't know where it's going to go. So if it goes up, cool, be happy. You made some, but if you want to get yeah. in more, in more. If it went down, cool, you got it on a discount. So that's like the method of DCAing, right? Is like you don't have to count on your decision at one point in time. You can do it at multiple points, two, three, four, whatever you decide. Um, the main thing is like have a plan. So I know that most airdrops usually dump, right? So I will probably try and sell some. But I'm also interested in the validating system and other things going on. So I'll probably keep a portion too because I know I want it long term. And I'm not a really great day trader. So I don't feel comfortable enough dumping everything, catching a trough, yada, yada. So, you know what I mean? I will do what, you know, I think I want some liquidity. I want to get paid for my efforts of staking. Let me get a portion out and then I'll leave a portion to then hopefully get future value of. I agree. That's, that's all good points. I, I have a strategy that I always use. It, it works really well for me. I call it the, the, the one, one hour and buy strategy. So um, I wait one hour after the airdrop. And then I buy as much as I can. For me, I have about 10K over on Merlin uh, in Bitcoin that I'm uh, I'm going to be buying the Merle token with. I'm going to be buying it, you know, one hour after the airdrop. Maybe like I'm just going to kind of watch it, see where it bottoms. And this worked for me really well when I did uh, our, uh, uh, Arbitrum. It really worked with it worked a lot of the airdrops. It, mm. it continues to work. One hour and buy. It worked with yeah, great with the, the rune stones. The Do you stones, sell yeah, at the I beginning to one. anything? No, or you just I don't. You hold no. and buy. Okay. So what I did with the runestones, for instance, uh, it got the airdrop happened, right? I waited about one hour and I got, I got a, what I, I was airdrop seven. And then I bought six more at, at around 0 0.1, po between 0 0.1 and 0 0.5. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. 0 0.01 and 0 0.015. And uh, I got six more, right? And then when I wrote up to 0.3, that's when I, I, I doubled my money at that point. So then I started selling the ones that I bought. And then around 0.4 and 0.5, I started selling the ones that was airdrop. Right. So I, I made out like a bandit with that. Right. So it was easy money. Um, so I'm going to continually do the same thing with Mer uh, Merle uh, one hour after it is officially dropped. And I'm going to let people kind of like get to their wallets and stuff like that and just start mm -hmm. dumping their tokens one hour, hour and a half. And I'm going to start. And that's where I start dollar cost averaging. Right. And this worked great with Voya as well. Uh, Voya, it, it dropped. It was at like 50 cents. It went all the way down to about 30 cents uh, after one hour after airdrop. And I started buying it at around 30 cents. Uh, was a selling after three dollars, right? 10x mm -hmm. that another huge gain of mine, right? I made a crap load of money on Voya, and I'm going to do the same thing with Merle. And if, if it as long as it continues to work until it stops working, I'm going to keep doing it one hour after buy. You buy, 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 buy. Once it doubles, you take your profit, yeah. And then the ones that I'm at airdropped, I'm going to keep for a little while, and then potentially, uh, I, I a lot of people like to DCA in, I like to DCA out, you know, so I'll be DCAing out of that as time goes throughout the year so i like it yeah, amen okay we said what happened with mineral shizzy okay we got into that already he said uh merle launching as a brc20 uh or what the deal with it yeah so it, the, the brc20s are inside of the mpc wallet um and then you're going to get the receipt of them uh airdrop to you on merlin you can use that same bridge to bring it out to layer one if you want to what do you guys think about that about bringing your uh, your Merle token to layer one. You going to do it? I mean, what's the benefit, right? Uh, Self-custody, obviously. Yeah. Um, but there's not going to be staking or, you know, additional incentives, uh, transaction fees. And I don't know. Yeah, I just don't see the incentive structure to be there. Um, it is cool that it's backed by that, right? Yeah. So maybe down the road, there's a play. I know that Voya is called Voya to make the great voyage. So I could see maybe they do have L1 staking eventually, right? They're intertwined yeah. with Unisat and everything going on there. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that maybe down the line, there could be a uh, more incentive, but right now I don't see it. Yeah. You can take it to other la layer twos as well. That's a benefit of it as well. So you can do something like that. Whatever you mm -hmm. can, are you going to keep it, you yeah. keep yours in Merle? Keep yours in yeah, uh, Merle? I mean, that's the whole <laughs> cook with Voya. So let's see yeah. what happens with that. Um, that was a nice free little airdrop. So... Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'm um, kind of just waiting on the sidelines right now. I, I feel like I'm bag holding, but mm. yeah, yeah, man. And we got uh, our man one and two. One and two is a part of the orange cubicle, and uh, we'll kind of get into the orange cubicle a little bit here. Uh, what is the orange cubicle, and uh, why is it important? I'll start with you, Kramer. Put you on the spot. Oh, don't fuck, don't mess this up, Kramer. Don't mess this up. <laughs> the Orange Cubicle is kind of a, a break off from the Ordinal Support Desk. 
Um, obviously, we got, I mean, it's like Johan, it's J25, Block, me, one and two, and Hype. And uh, we're still trying to figure out what we're doing with it. But like, um, yeah, Damn. I mean, it's, it's, for me, it's like, my dude, my whole career has been like behind the camera. So like, I'm trying to get used to this whole thing being in front of the camera and like, uh, so it's a, it's a little weird for me, but um, I'm embracing it. But um, yo, you've had some cool guests. We, I mean, dude, you guys are like our, you and you Gobi are like our, our podcast big brothers. <laughs> and I'm really impressed with you guys and how you guys are doing everything, and it, it really just like motivates us to to do better. So, oh, thanks, yeah. dude. Yeah, Jay. Shout out for all the support, dude. Uh, we really appreciate it, and definitely, yeah, we are taking suggestions and and trying to catch up to you guys. Uh, hopefully, we can have more of a friendly competition. But you guys are killing it lately uh definitely go check out that runes versus brc 20 uh 2.0 uh benari and bob bodilly two big brains in the space um really respect both of them and had great conversation with both of them in the past um was very surprised that bob was uh you know pretty hype on brc 20 2.0 um he kind of you know is friends with cb spears and in the casey circle so i thought he'd be more bullish on runes so you know check out some of his criticism of runes that i think can uh, maybe you know give you some pause that it does need more development just like brc 20s do but there's actually a plan in place for brc 20s so that's the big difference i think that came out of that and yeah orange cubicle uh you know shout out hype coming up with the idea of ordinal support desk this crazy 24 7 space um that's become you know uh nap time uh where we bring our we work style digital business together and and chat about everything ordinals obviously sometimes it gets off the rails when you're around people that much uh but we've been doing this ever since you know yeah september october uh, and then the goosenels launched so honk honk um we had fun building that out um, i was late to the party i was unfortunately traveling at the time so i got to be exit liquidity and buy the top and then you know dca and all the way down so i'm happy with my bag and I really want to build more in the space. So, you know, Shizzy and Yagobi with Horde Revolution have been showing the way. So we decided to do something a little more professional, maybe sometimes. Um, but yeah, we've been doing some interviews and things like that. We're going to try and actually do some more live streams. So thanks, Shizzy, for showing me uh, some of the StreamYard stuff in the future. And we'll see where it goes. We want to try and do like a little having party uh, the nights coming up leading into that. So. Uh, more stuff, just content, uh, get it out there, have fun with it. And I'm really excited to see what Kramer can do. Had a blast meeting him in New York. You know, like he said, he's been behind the camera. He knows how to do this kind of stuff. And now he gets to be the star in the show too. So <laughs> <laughs> even if he doesn't want to, right, he'll just have some guy come and grab him and try and sell puppets. But yeah, and actually definitely check that one out because uh, I need to listen to it fully. But there's a new intro song. So it's not quite the Sam Sage song that we're all bobbing oh, yeah, through yeah. every yard, Ordinal Revolution, but it, it's close, man. I was pretty impressed. You know, shout out Johan and FTI for making that happen. It was. Uh, it's, it's, it, can, can I? Do you care if I play it? Yeah, go for it, dude. All right, let me. Uh, I gotta stop my screen here for a second. Yeah, you might have to unmute it or something. Yeah, let me just check it out here. All right. Oh no, hold on. Loading. Sorry, so, live problems. Live good. problems. So. One thing yeah. you'll learn when you're using um, uh, StreamYard is uh, mm -hmm. you, you have a little button here that you have to press before you share your screen. It's annoying to get the okay. audio working. All right, here we go. Like, gotcha. Check it, J25, leading. We kick it off strong. Block drifting extraordinaire in a zone, never wrong. Creamers on point, tail slick and quick. High ends, wisdom plans, every line sticks. Orange cubicle crew, we're setting the tone. One, two ounce flow, grapes carving its own. Yo, hands got queries, hard hitting, smart. Questions that probe deep straight to the heart. Orange cubicle, with a voice to choice. Every story celebrated, make some noise. Jenny's in the mix, she's playing a part. With all Nows and vibes, craft and art, tuning, vibe out, feel the beat, get the clout. This is the proof. That's what we look out. Hey guys, Yo, that is Crypto Slam here. Yo, bro, oh. that is cool. Who's this guy? Uh, we got a little, we got a little promo in there. Yeah, yeah, give it some love. Guys. <laughs> Crypto Slam, they're, they're doing all the editing and stuff, Johan. So yeah, we let them slide in a little, a little sponsorship there. But yeah, we're trying yeah, to get, yeah. you know, on your level with the sponsors and stuff, we're slowly getting to that point. And that's where Kramer's like content really comes in beautifully. Uh, he's helped develop some like top 10 segments that are great. 
to make that short form content. Um, So yeah, that's what we're really focused on is doing more short form content for like TikTok, YouTube shorts, those things that can go viral on, on Twitter and X and everything. So uh, yeah, we're just experimenting and, and yeah, we'll mold and change. And we saw you guys do it. You know what I mean? Your form of show is not the exact same as you started. And uh, yeah, I think ours won't be the yeah. same next week, next month. Yeah, you, you, you got to shout out to whoever that artist is. I feel bad not knowing. I'm actually going to ask right now, <laughs> but they did an amazing job. And I'm definitely going to send out a thank you tweet about that later. Thank that you. was really good, dude. I yeah. liked it a lot. I didn't even know about it until not. it went. Yeah, that's why it took a little longer this week, I guess. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I know who it is. Really? Yeah. It, it's an industry voice, you know? <laughs> yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but yeah, thank you guys for sharing man. that. Thank you very no much. No problem, dude. Guys, and and please, uh, if you're watching this, jump over to their thing. Uh, subscribe to their channel, man. Let's, let's get them to two, two, three hundred. And guys, you'll see, like for us, dude, the grind to a thousand was almost impossible. But once we hit it, two thousand was like a week later. And then yeah. once once we hit, we we, we just broke eleven thousand, which is absolutely You just had to hit those guys. levels in the algorithm. And well, like you guys this before. It. Yeah, just keep yep. chugging along. Um, you know, like NFT NYC, we've got a little recap coming for that too. That'll be nice and ha- highlight you guys too. Um, but yeah, we're gonna you know change things up. We're gonna try and do some live stuff. We're still gonna do some interviews that we're lining up. But yeah, we're just gonna keep experimenting and putting stuff out there. And I'm really excited to do goofy stuff with Kramer on green screens, live, whatever. You know, maybe we'll have to meet in the middle in Pittsburgh and just do something wild one day too. Yeah, but we yeah, shout out, up, dude. I thought oh, yeah. we were in the middle of there. <laughs> yeah, no, right? Exactly. Yeah, if you, you, we could do a ball game, man. I'm always down to catch a Hell ball yeah. game. I've never been to Pittsburgh either, so uh, that'd be a yeah, perfect man. spot. And then, uh, yeah, just in Nashville, right? Like Nashville is going to be fun. I know you guys are looking forward to it. Yeah, uh, I still need to hit up Bitcoin Magazine for that thing we talked about. But we got to yeah, do I'm that. Sure you guys yeah. will be doing stuff, and yeah, if maybe we can collab or we'll just tag along and, and eat the breadcrumbs of Ordinal Revolution, we're fine with that. Yeah, okay. man. I get to the last questions and then we get out of here. We got um, yeah. we got Tree City West in the building. Tree City is always here. Thank you, Tree. Uh, we have Kai Effect. He said, "Man, I was so happy to get Mineral. I was hoping it would be another blue box. Yeah, I'm sorry, bud. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Thank you. He said, "Thank you, Kramer and J25. I have been helped many times by J25. Uh, what is the pre rooms collection? H- has more potential for runes airdrop. What are you guys thinking? What is some what is some pre runes collections that you guys are interested in? Runes pups. Runes pups. Don't fade the puppets. Don't fade yeah. the puppets. <laughs> that was the play, right? Like you got dropped a rune stone and it ran to like 0.05. And then when rune pups came out, if you would have went and snagged like five of those, they were I think it was uh two rune stones to get a rune pups at the peak the other day. Yeah, the, everything around us is pups right now. Derivatives, yeah, tokens, different chains. I mean, they're yeah. literally putting out pups on base, on Solana, everywhere, right? Like, it's it's kind of crazy, but it is cool. Uh, I Fortunate enough, I don't even remember who all of them were, but I got to meet some of the pups along with Kramer when we were in New York. Super down-to-earth guys, man. Just they're, they're not even here for the money, and it's literally raining on them. So uh, I'm not fading them. I definitely wish I would have got some pups, but didn't. And I'm just happy to be along for the ride and see what's going on. Uh, I think Runestone's an obvious one. Just Leo is going to shill that bag, right? There's more tokens to come. So technically, just owning them gets you three tokens as long as the plan goes you know, as they wish on top of all the other stuff. You know, some of the stuff with, like, certain websites hey if you own a root and stone you can come get this thing hasn't really been worth it for the most part a lot of them haven't been but i think that there could be better more quality things down the road right i think there was just that initial hype cycle and then down the road whatever even like gamestone has had like a cool like idea and mainly went to rune stone holders um i think one and i didn't get them but i did end up uh like i didn't get the airdrop for arsic but i think arsic's being a little overlooked uh even though it's had you know it's ups and downs and whatever, but it was the first pre rune, right? It kind of started this whole narrative and now is being overlooked by everything else. I'm glad I got a little bit because of a liquidity loan that defaulted during the swings, but I was able to get out at a profit. So I basically got paid to get some of the Arsic tokens, which is about the yeah. only way that I would have got them because I wasn't buying off a of secondary. So yeah. I'm happy to do that. And maybe I do buy some of the token if there is a huge dump when it first opens, kind of like your methodology with the one hour and wait. Like if I yep. see a huge dump, I'm definitely willing to try and uh, go in. And that's been mainly from uh, after hours and shaman just teaching me more TA. 
like being more confident, like this is a dump, but it's not a sustainable dump forever, right? There's going to be the swing back. There's going to be people that are coming in that want to buy. And it, and with your methodology, even getting a 2X on your money is freaking amazing. Yeah, small small wins, man. You you don't you don't need to hit home runs. I mean, if, yeah, because you compound that, and then you could, you're able to take that thousand dollars you earn, put it in something else, and then that doubles again. And now you just technically three x, right? So it's it's all about the, getting in something new, getting in mm -hmm. something that, that that people are going to be excited for, and then always uh, uh, too, like you can keep you can keep part of that back, you know, forever, as long as you want, because now it's a moon cool. bag. You just forget about it, you know. Go look at a calculator, right? Well. Like two x, two x, two x. You know that adds up fast. Whereas if you're taking these home run 100x shots all the time because you're throwing 20 bucks on this crazy yeah. thing here and there, I mean, it's going to take you so many more times to hit. Whereas if you have a plan, you have a plan going into it and you're executing it. No, I really like yep. that. And you have very reasonable expectations. It, people are making a couple hundred bucks a day working a job all day. Exactly. It, like, you know, you know what I mean? Or just being able to get 100% gains that takes seven years in the normal stock market in theory. Right. So yep. like, yeah, we're just a little uh, impatient to say the least. Yeah. Here. And one of the people that are, like, I say this a lot on the show, but you have to sell your peanuts when the circus is in town. Right. So what I mean by that is like, let's just say you have a big bag of peanuts, the circus is in town, you're making money, right? You're selling them every single day. But if you don't sell all your peanuts by the time the circus leaves, you're stuck with a big bag of peanuts that you don't Volume. want anymore. You can't do anything with them. Right. That's so a volume you, analogy. You, yeah. You want to sell into volume. You don't want to be yes. catching the volume as it's leaving town and hoping they buy it for sure yep. on the way out because, you know, but then you're going to get a lot less for it because they're, they're like, already oh, yeah, looking at the new shiny thing that came into town. Exactly. Yep. You're looking at the next thing. Exactly. Exactly. So anything on that, Kramer? Oh, man. Um, I just saw I got sniped on a, a clay puppet. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn it, man. These the tools are working. Tools. It's, a, it's a good sign, though, if people are sniping that. It's a coveted collection, right? Hopefully it uh, rebounds after men. Yeah, I, I got a good feeling about these clay puppets. They uh, look sharp. Yeah. Uh, Anything on the, the pre-room collection, Kramer? You good? <laughs> that question. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, I mean... Yeah, obviously the rune pups are like my main bag. I'm, I'm holding some rune stones. I only got five of them air dropped. I sold two, so I'm holding on to a few of those. Um, yeah, I mean, what do you guys think about that dog token he talked about uh, with with the next airdrop on those? The initial token coming from runestone. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, I, he put like a do, like a dog uh, emoji mm -hmm. for like the token. Yeah, I, I think uh, like dogs are kind of played out. I, would, I mean, I think yeah. uh, people want to see something different. There's been the talk of the cat narrative. We saw the the animal narrative run earlier in BRC20s, um, except for dog. You know, dog was a token that went, but it didn't do, you know, anything like rats or other ones. Um, I just don't, I really honestly don't like the three token aspect. Um, I think it's hard enough to do one thing well, let alone juggle three things well. So um, I know that like it's supposed to be an airdrop incentive to keep you along for the game, but I, I think it's also creating more problems uh, in the future than they realize. Oh man, yeah. code for Florid! <laughs> <laughs> I will be buying one uh, some dog one hour after drop. I think it does do really well. And I think I can get it for pennies of the price of a runestone. So I do want some dog, but I'm not willing to mm -hmm. hold a runestone in, into right. that. I think they, so. you can trade the token, right? But does, yeah, does it makes sense to hold the runestone throughout. And that this has been brought up. Like, do you think it's worth 0 0.09 or 0 0.07 where it is right now? Like that allotment of tokens, or do you think it's going to fluctuate like most things do, and you can get it a better price? Way yeah. better price. I agree. Yep. Uh, is it true it takes five days to remove your Bitcoin off Merlin? So it's up to five days. So uh, I've re I've removed some. Uh, one time I did it, it took three days. One time I did it, it took one day. Um, you can use other other ways. You can use stuff like on the EVM side where it just takes a few minutes. Um, there's multiple bridges now. It's not just the one bridge anymore. You can use uh, Mason, which was the first one, but there's also a bunch of other ones. Uh, if, if you want, you, my, Mike, you're, you're in my DMs. You can reach out to me. I can give you other bridges if you want to get out the EVM way. And then you can just send it to a centralized exchange or and then put it back into Bitcoin if, if you want to. Because you take a wrap Bitcoin, you can do it to uh, Binance Smart Chain or you can do it to ETH or Arbitrum. And then you can, um, you know, get it out that way from exchange or whatever you want to do. But yeah, you guys, have you guys tried getting any Bitcoin out of there yet? Besides the EVM way? I'm all locked in. 
Yeah, I haven't. I was going to, but I was traveling and just missed some trades, and then the dump happened, and I was like, okay, I guess I'm waiting. Yeah, no, I gotcha. Uh, M Star announcement: airdrop for NFT holders and early supporters. Have you been following this at all? No. I yeah, I remember hearing vaguely about it. I technically own, I think, some of those codes or whatever, the Morse yeah. codes, but uh, Merlin codes. But yeah, uh, haven't been following it. Can you fill us in more? Yeah, so um, they they dropped their their um, IDO was the other day. They they did absolutely amazing. They killed it. They were on the show last week as well. If you guys haven't seen the episode, uh, definitely uh, right. go back and watch that. Um, it was a really good one. It really explained the origins of Merlin Starter. Um, uh, launch. If you guys don't know, um, you know, launch pads always do the best, right? Every launch pad is going to do so much better than this. I I participated in the IDO, and um, I actually have uh six of these NFTs. They have, and I had, I, because you can stake them, but it's not staking. You're actually burning them because it says staking, but you're not getting them back. You're going to get tokens instead. So I have six of them. You can put three in three in two different wallets. The max you can do is three per wallet. And I, I did it two separate wallets. I have six of them and I've locked them in. So I'm going to get some of them tokens. Uh, I, I actually reached out to the team and I was like, hey guys, like, uh, you know, with the NFT launch and stuff, it didn't look good. It, you know, it actually got bought it up real quickly and it kind of doesn't, it kind of looks shady and the, the community was pissed off, right? Especially, um, uh, there's a guy, 69420, he's big, big voice on, on Twitter. I like him a lot. He was killing this project every day. He was crushing it. And then I reached out to the team and I was like, hey guys, um, it might be a good idea, you know, if you guys would just over incentivize these NFTs, like give them the M star token. And, you know, and they, they said they'll look into it. So then I said, OK, if they do listen to me, let me make sure that I have some NFTs uh, staked. So I don't think I think you can still do it. I, I If you guys are interested, go grab some of the NFTs. They're, they're, I think they're like 0.09 or something. They're not point on. Yeah, I think they're like point. It's like a thousand bucks or 900 bucks or whatever that equals. In double 09. Yeah. OK. Double 09. Yeah. And then you can potentially um, uh, burn them technically and get some uh, MSR tokens. I highly rec recommend doing it. I don't know if they're going to listen right. to me or not. I hope so. I think it would help We're them, it but it's something that um, if you're interested in doing, it might, might not be a bad plan. But have you looked at that at all, Kramer? No, I haven't. All right, all right. I remember hearing the... about him. I, I might have signed up for something early on, but yeah, I haven't followed it well. Thank you. Gotcha. Do you think the Merle token will hold its two dollar pre market price? What do you think? I thought it was lower than that right now. Wasn't it's it? two two thirty right now on on Whale uh, Market. Oh. Yeah. What market cap is that? Ah, uh, it's a lot. It's like <laughs> I don't even. I mean, right? Yeah. yeah it, I think it's like like. Yeah, I would it, guess it, no. Then uh, you okay. know what I mean. Just because of sell pressure from unlocking, airdrop, yeah. etc. Right? Does it mean it rebounds? Maybe you know what I mean. Wicks usually get filled, uh, is what a lot of people tell me. So, but yeah, I think it. I just think airdrop. It's going to dump to some point, and you know you want that, right? Because you're waiting yeah, an hour do. for that yep. dump to buy in. So. Yep. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely going to dip below that for at least a period of time. But I think that then validating system, ideally the eco st starts humming. But right now there is a little lull in volume because just it runes is sucking the air on everything right now. Yeah, it really is. Uh, yep. So that's what I'm thinking too. The Merle token might be a good idea to release it towards the end of the month. Honestly, let runes do their thing and kind of uh, come in uh, when everyone has a whole bunch of money, you know, because everyone's mm -hmm. made a whole bunch of money and the holders are happy because they're holding the tokens they want. And the people yeah. who mined them sold their tokens. So they're holding a bunch of uh, liquidity that potentially can go into Merle, which I'm kind of hoping uh, is an option too. But to answer your question, it's about $5 billion market cap, uh, yeah. but that's fully, that's fully diluted. It's yeah. obviously not going to be fully diluted. So um, right. you got to remember too, like a lot of these tokens, like Polkadot and stuff like that. If Polkadot was fully diluted, it would be above Ethereum, right? right. So it's in by market cap. So circulating uh, supply, yeah. So we don't know what circulating supply is going to be. So it, it's probably going to be lower than a billion. I, I can't see them because 2.1 billion tokens. I just can't see them putting out, you know, over a billion tokens in the beginning, right? So right. well, and they need we'll some see. for validating in long term, and yeah. Exactly, exactly. Development, so. etc. Marketing. Yep. All right, all right. Let's finish this out here. We got to smash the like, guys. Uh, definitely smash that like, please. It helps the channel more than you guys realize. You guys, I used to never tell people to smash a like. And then I was talking to a bigger YouTuber, and he was like, dude, every like like brings in like five people. So it's just one of those things where it's like if you get 50 likes, you can probably bring in like five, like a bunch. So you got it, got it. Especially when you're live, tell the people to, to smash a like. It actually means a lot, and I had no idea, and I was never yeah, saying it. Probably gets you on that front page better too. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. I think that is the last. Okay, here we go. La last question: Room miners or node apes? 
I don't know either of these projects. <laughs> what do you guys know? Artifex, or is he talking about the, the Mania Miners? What is he talking about? I have no idea. Oh, okay. Runic, Runic Miners, Runic. I don't know it. Do I have I one? I don't know it either. Better check your wallets. You might have some. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, I we think I got one of those, but I think I sold it. Yeah. Yeah, man. We got 388 people in here. We appreciate every single one of you guys, man. Thank you so much. Uh, we got about uh, 75 people on on YouTube, and uh, the rest are on Twitter. That's highly recommend you guys doing too. Go live on Twitter. Go live on YouTube. And if you have Facebook, if you have Instagram, you can go live on all of them using StreamYard all at once. So that definitely helps the channel so much because we were just doing YouTube in the beginning and we weren't getting a lot. But now being on Twitter, you get a lot more because obviously the follower account on, on Twitter is, is, is pretty big as well. And they're but, uh, the video. It's like the top of spaces and they definitely want the video interaction. Yeah. They definitely, they're definitely pushing videos over there. So definitely get in there. You guys will help you out a long time. And it builds. So and if you do get screwed by YouTube later, you still have a Twitter following. That that could you know right. help you until you get your channel back or whatever. So that's definitely something that we want to do. It's definitely not keeping your all your all, all your eggs in one basket. And uh, I just want to uh, say goodbye to you guys, man. Appreciate both you guys so much. Thank you guys for so much for being here. Uh, it really helped me out today. Without Yago B, it would just been me here scrambling along. So I really really respect you guys, and I hope you guys succeed in everything you guys are doing. And uh, just kick ass, guys. Likewise, bro. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Us. All right, guys. Peace. All right, guys, you know the deal. Smash that like. Hit the subscribe. If, uh, check out orderrevolution.com. We have some of the best articles over there. And if you are going to Nashville, we have a 20% off coupon at the very top there. Click that. And then we also have some of the best gear. Check out our gear. If, if you're if you're not going to pick our gear, definitely wear some Ordinals gear in Nashville. Show the maxis where you belong. You belong to Ordinals. And uh, we're a part of that community. So definitely do that. Um, if you're not a member, think about signing for the members. Me and Yagobi are going to put out a bunch of member videos this week, leading you into, into uh, runes, telling you exactly what we're doing. We're going to have a bunch of, like, two three minute videos hey guys we're buying this hey guys we're buying this so if you guys want alpha uh on exactly what we're doing it might not be the best moves but it's it's going to be what we're doing definitely sign up for the members videos we have over 200 members it's, it's 9.99 a month we appreciate every single one of our members and uh we're definitely gonna get more and more videos we've been slacking on it but there hasn't been any any alpha really to put out but this coming next two weeks are gonna be absolutely insane definitely worth it in uh, my eyes but if you don't want to do it completely fine too uh we'll ha definitely have some of the best content on the live channel but uh, that's the show, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time, same place. Uh, see you guys. We OG, we OG, or no OG. You're not bullish enough. Yeah. Oh, no, you're not bullish enough. You ain't got the or no. I get stoned by the bolo. Bitcoin sets a Ulo. Yeah, experts on reload. Yeah, yeah. You're not bullish enough. Yeah. Oh no, you're not bullish enough. You ain't got the or no. I get stoned by the bolo. Bitcoin sets a Ulo. Experts on reload, reload. Man, pool getting hot. Everybody wanna rock. Hey, runes coming. Everybody on a night. Hey, it's a nuisance. Order no revolution. Hey, uh, order no revolution. Yo, it's my guy for real, bro. Got friends right now. Yo, BRC420, bro. Yeah, bro. Yo, that shit found fire, bro. Imagine if he in here. Yeah, lock it in the seal. Murder. I got balls of steel. Nuki's on the field. Yeah, this shit for real. With no calls, I get so far. Got a hundred phone calls. Bet I go hard, and they gon' love me. Smoke weed, huddle back. I get shy, Steve. Where my Bitcoin looking lovely, all this Satoshi's nothing above me